Yankees NBA, Adrian Wojnarowski, and uh, he joins us now on the show. Woj, it's Michael, Don, and Peter. How are you? Hey guys, how you doing? Good to I, be with you. I know you're very busy, so we'll make this as fast as we can. Tell me what your thoughts are uh, on the Leon Rose hiring, which is not yet official. I look at it as an inspired hire. How about you? Yeah, I think you've seen the model that the Knicks are, are trying to bank on here. Um, in Golden State with Bob Myers, with the Lakers, with Rob Palenka, to an extent, Justin Zanuck, who's an outstanding GM with the Jazz, although he worked in he worked in a front office before he became a GM, but was an agent for a very long time. Uh, listen, Leon Rose is, uh, you know, was absolutely is has been one of the elite player agents in the NBA for a very long time, sustained it over decades. Represented, I think by now people know what his list of uh, uh, clients uh, has been. I think sometimes when you come from the agent business, there are a lot of, it's such a competitive industry. You can have a lot of enemies. You can have, uh, you know, a lot of ill will toward the guys you competed against. I've never sensed that with Leon. I think he was respected by the guys he competed with, uh, worked with, and, uh, and I think the one thing, and, and Leon knows the market. He is a more of a South Jersey, Philly guy, but he has been around New York a very long time. You know, he's, he's a Jersey Shore guy in the summer. He knows the culture. He knows um, the, the, the appetite of that Nick fan. He has been in the middle of it for a very long time. And I think the one thing, though, Mike, and, and when, when you look at this kind of a hire, I think there's a tendency to think, well, He's got these relationships with players, and then that's going to translate into your roster. That's not really how it goes. Uh, you know, you look at Bob Myers, Rob Palenka, their rosters are not with ex-clients or with players from their firm who migrated to them. Uh, that's not how it goes. You, The reason you hire Leon Rose is because you think he can build out an organization. You think he can lead it. You think that he understands the, the, the inside of the league to know who to surround himself with. Obviously, staff is going to be important. The one thing you have with the Knicks is a tremendous resources. You have the ability to go hire the best people. And I think that for Leon Rose, that will be the first challenge for him is to start figuring out who's going to stay and go with the organization, make changes, and then bring in the right people. But he has, uh, you know, he checks off every box, Mike. What are some of the names you're hearing as possible hires? Uh, none. I mean, this okay. just happened quickly. I, 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 I'm not going to presume um, uh, to to know like that he's made up his mind on, on anyone. I think w one thing with Leon, I think he's got a, a lot of uh, close relationships. I think he's uh, uh, someone who I think is probably going to have some people around him who, who he knows well. And then I think he'll go outside his comfort zone and, and, and look there, too. Uh, you know, listen, two coaches he's had very strong relationships through the years. Both, you know, have been tied to one's worked with the Knicks before. Another's been tied to that job at different points. You know, Tom Thibodeau, John Calipari. But, you know, but just because you have relationships and history with him doesn't mean it's, uh, you know, especially for Cal where he is at Kentucky and all the factors. You know, those are certainly people I think he's going to draw on for advice and thoughts um, but, you know, this is somebody well-versed in the league, has great relationships with the other general managers and presidents, which I think is important in deal-making. So many deals in the league are built around trust and relationships, and, and you know, he walks in having those things, and, and I think now he'll, he'll start to, uh, you know, map out, you know, what this is going to look like for him. I'm intrigued by the uh, William Wesley uh, addition World Wide West. Um, obviously, he's a power broker with the players and with coaches as well. How does he fit in just uh, as part of the staff, obviously not as a GM? Well, I'm not, I, I, I'm certainly not reporting, Mike, that he is going to be on board on staff. Certainly, Leon and, and, and uh, William Wesley worked, you know, together. They've had a close relationship for a very long time. They both have been at CAA uh, for a number of years now in, in different, a little bit different roles there. Um, but both, both uh, you know, Leon Rose on the player side, I think Wes is more on the coaching consultant side there. Uh, but I, certainly William Wesley has had a very good relationship with Jim Dolan through the years, um, as has, I believe, Leon Rose. And I think with Dolan, 
familiarity. You've seen not in every hire he's made. He didn't really know Phil Jackson. But in many of these hires, having a relationship, having history with people has mattered to him. And so I think that's a part of it. But whether or not Wes is coming on staff, that I'm unclear of. But certainly um, there, there's, there's a strong relationship there. He now is... Uh, he works with CAA now. I, I don't know that he's leaving CAA. That, that may happen, but I don't know that to be true. Now, as somebody who's been around basketball a long time and around the Knicks, would you look at this as a good day or a wait-and-see day? Well, I, 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 I think it's a good day. I also think, though, like, and I think Leon Rose knows this, um, like there's a learning curve, and I think – you know, Bob Myers will tell you it, and Rob Palenka will tell you it. Like, it's it's not like being an agent. You know, when, when you're an agent, your focus is on what is the, what is in the best interest of my client, advocating for your client. And when you're on the other side, you're building a team, and it's different, and it's a different mindset. And uh, the transition is a is just that, a transition. But I think Leon has everything that it would take to have success in that job but he hasn't done it yet and uh i do know this about him tremendous work ethic uh tremendous ability to connect with people and, and a really a great basketball mind i mean i think he's got a great basketball acumen i think that's what attracted you know with some of the players he's had and the high level players you know you don't represent chris paul um and uh you know really smart uh historic players without their respect for your knowledge of the game and, and understanding how to move them around the chessboard, where they fit in the league, all those things, I think, speak to his qualifications for, for the job. It, just in terms of conversations you've had with colleagues and those in the know throughout the day, how do you think the move's being received in the NBA community? Well, I think, you know, we reported initially that, you know, I think people have been, um, I think people were alerted to the idea that this hire may come from the agent world. You know, Ramona Shelburne and I reported, you know, shortly after Steve Mills is firing, that once this started to go away from a pursuit of Masai Ujiri, that they were focused on the agent, on the agent community, and and then it, and then it moved on to Leon Rose. Uh, so I think that people are getting more accustomed to. The idea of this transition, uh, you know, the other guys we mentioned, you know, the Mets made a similar hire last year. And so it's not as novel of an idea uh, or or transition as it's been in, in years past. People are getting used to it. But I think the sense that I've gotten from people around the league is that because of Leon's Northeastern roots, his understanding of of the place and the organization knowing Jim Dolan, knowing how to work with Jim Dolan, that's a really important part of this job. I mean, he's been through it with him, with Carmelo Anthony, and that whole, you know, the coming together of them, the ups and downs during Carmelo's tenure, and then obviously how it broke apart at the end. He's been through difficult times. I know he's had difficult conversations with Jim Dolan. I, so, I, so I think having that understanding of Dolan and that history and, 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 and a level of trust there, I think, is going to be really important for this job because it's not all, it, hasn't, it hasn't always been easy to work there. I know you're right up against it, so very quickly, your evaluation of the trade of, uh, of Marcus Morris. Did you like what they got for him? Well, it felt like there was a little more to maybe be had in the marketplace. I, I, I thought the Clippers would give up, would need to give up a little more given how important Morris was to fitting in there, but they got a first round pick. They did the right thing. Um, they did the right thing in moving him on. They've got to start, you know, again, getting assets and, you know, where he is in his career doesn't fit the timeline of, of what's going to be starting over again with the Knicks. And so all in all, a, a good move. I think it was a difficult time for them to try to do a trade in the middle of a transition here. Um, and, and certainly I think the Clippers helped themselves there and, and uh, the Knicks had to move on from him they couldn't keep him and re-sign him it just it, it didn't make sense for where the organization is right now good stuff thanks Woj. i appreciate it thanks guys appreciate you all right that's uh, 